Today, this Sunday, was the Sunday where Catherine and I, along with many of you, were supposed to be in the Holy Land. Y'all remember that? We're supposed to be in the Holy Land. In fact, today, I'm supposed to be in Jerusalem. It is a, uh, it's a facet prayerfully. That trip will be rescheduled very, very soon. It is a trip that I love to take, especially, Catherine and I lead groups, especially when I'm taking people who have never been there before, believers who are, who are experiencing the land of the Bible for the very first time. It is something that we love to do because it is a trip full of highlights. Every single day in this 10-day journey, there is something that absolutely blows your mind. Uh, in fact, the way the, the way the trip works is we, we go exploring during the day. We visit all of these sites during the day. Then in the evening, we come back to the hotel and we have dinner together. And inevitably, the conversation around the tables that night goes something like this. I cannot believe what we experienced today. I cannot believe what we laid our eyes on Today, cannot believe that we are where we were today. And in every single case, here's what I get to say. If you think today was amazing, just wait until tomorrow because it is a trip filled with highlights. Well, if I had to rank my highlights, that would be very difficult to do, first of all. One of the highlights, though, that would have to rank in the top three or four for me is the Sea of Galilee. Now, if you've been to the Sea of Galilee, you know why that is such a special, special place. The Sea of Galilee is not only special because of what took place there centuries ago when Jesus was here, but it's a special place because it is absolutely gorgeous. It is a, it's a very large lake, pristine waters. It's clear. It's surrounded by mountains. In fact, the Sea of Galilee is fed to the north by the waters of the Jordan River that come down out of the mountains. And the Jordan River flows into the Sea of Galilee, and the Sea of Galilee's waters are so pure and clean. In fact, uh, for centuries... One of the ways that families who lived near the Sea of Galilee sustained themselves was through fishing businesses. You know, many of the disciples were, in fact, fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. They made their living fishing from the fish in the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful, life-giving lake. But later in the trip, we experience another body of water. It's not far away. In fact, it's only 80 miles to the south of the Sea of Galilee, and it's called the Dead Sea. Now, here's what's interesting about the Dead Sea, many things. Uh, one of the interesting things about the Dead Sea is it's, it's fed by exactly the same waters that feed the Sea of Galilee. It, too, is fed by the Jordan River. In fact, the Jordan River flows into the Sea of Galilee to the north, and then it flows out of the Sea of Galilee to the south and it goes further south and it flows into the Dead Sea. But here's what you notice about the Dead Sea. It's very different from the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee's waters are life-giving. The Dead Sea's waters are dead. What do I mean by that? The Dead Sea waters are such that nothing can live in the Dead Sea. That's why it's dead. Now, that's interesting. Both bodies of water fed by the same source, the Jordan River. So why is it that one is life-giving and the other is dead? The explanation is quite simple. The Sea of Galilee receives water from the north and gives water to the south. The Dead Sea, however, is the lowest place on earth. So what flows into the Dead Sea never flows out and it makes the sea dead. It's almost as if our creator was painting on the canvas of creation a vitally important truth for life. Generosity gives life, 
Greed brings death. When we get and then we give, we are life-giving. When we get and we never give, that brings death. 